he had an exceptionalism about him. One of the greatest people I've ever known. One of the, maybe one of the brightest men I've ever met in my life. He had an elegance about him that was just wonderful. He was a respected pioneer. Bill was one of those guys that thought ahead all the time. Everything he used to tell me about the gambling business uh, has come to pass. It was really busy. It was crowded all the time. They had the showroom, they had a cabaret, they had a piano lounge, somebody playing a guitar in another part of the club. And in those days, it was number one. And he set a standard for excellence in the reputation of the company and its conduct that supported our growth over all these periods since. He treated his employees like family. He was so interested in everything. Uh, he, he was so curious about everything. He'd come into the showroom and he'd shake every, all the captains by hand and know them, know their wives, know their families. He just was such a wonderful person. The uh, environment was very friendly and welcoming. I don't think there was a day that I went to work at Harris that I didn't enjoy it. It was really fun to go to work. We always felt extremely proud of what we did because we felt that we were the best in the industry. He was a good friend to the stars. Nobody treated entertainers with such respect as Bill. He felt that entertainment was the key to, to bringing people in. Going back to the Jack Benny days, Wayne Newton, Sammy Davis, and Bill Cosby, and Jim Neighbors, and... Uh, you name it, we've had those entertainers here. I, you ask any entertainer who ever played Vegas and Harris, and they'd always say, oh, Bill Harris, of course, because he treated you so nicely. But he had his quirks. Well, we knew there was an expectation of greatness. He wanted everything to be as perfect as it could be. We all became hararized, you know, we became brainwashed, and you learned to do everything the way Mr. Harrow wanted it done. And there were no delays. Uh, he was fastidious about everything being on time. Everything that Bill Harrow did, he did it first class. He, he had two categories for people, classy and not classy. And, you know, it, it was, you had to work real hard to be in the classy <laughs> category with him. He was a very shy kind of guy. He wasn't talkative. He was quiet. They didn't say much. You almost had to figure it out yourself. For this, the Bill Harris Centennial Celebration, we found a close friend who knows just what he'd say if Bill were still here. Oh, are you still alive? <laughs> The roots of Bill Harrah's empire began in Southern California. William Fisk Harrah was born on September 2nd, 1911 in South Pasadena. His father, John Harrah, was a lawyer and occasional politician, serving as mayor of Venice, the famed beachside community. While the Harrahs weren't wealthy, they enjoyed a comfortable, if tenuous, middle-class life as property owners. Southern California was the mecca for car lovers, and Bill's famous love affair began at an early age. At 16, his father bought him a Chevy Roadster, and it quickly became Bill's first love. When it was stolen and stripped, Bill was devastated and vowed that he would someday own a duplicate of every car the family had owned. Everyone would agree that Bill eventually accomplished that goal, and a bit more. By the late 1920s, the Great Depression had begun. Bill was studying mechanical engineering at UCLA when his father, who had invested in speculative real estate, was wiped out. Bill left college to help with the family's one remaining business, a large building on the Venice Pier which housed a pool hall, hot dog stand, shooting gallery, and, fatefully, a bingo-style operation called the Reno Game. It wasn't long before Bill was in charge, and by applying the principles that would make him famous years later, treating the customer well and running an honest establishment, he turned the $100 a week game into a $50,000 per year business. But while gaming in Southern California was legal for games of skill, Bill grew tired of the on-again, off-again legal status of his operation, which seemed to be at the whim of local politicians. He began to look elsewhere, and California's neighbor, Nevada, looked promising. 
Gambling became legal in Nevada in 1931 and was treated more like an industry. When a friend returned from a visit to Reno with stories of opportunity and prosperity there, Bill decided that was where he needed to be. In 1937, Bill Hara opened a bingo parlor. At the time, casinos in Reno were considered dark, bare-bones, seedy establishments. But Bill wanted to be different. He knew that by focusing on customer comfort, paying attention to details, and treating his employees well, Harris would prosper. And it did. Harris grew steadily, expanding and buying up the competition. In 1946, Bill moved up to full-scale casino entertainment when he opened Harris Club. In those early days, competition in Reno was fierce, but Harris became the top dog, mostly because Bill was a perfectionist when it came to customer comfort and service. His attention to detail, the cleanliness and efficiency of the casino, set Harris apart. Bill Hara was also a visionary. Other Reno casino owners thought Bill was crazy, but he saw tremendous opportunity in Lake Tahoe. In 1955, he bought a small but prosperous club and did a first-class renovation that resulted in Harris Lake Tahoe. It was an instant success. When snow closed access to the lake, he operated a fleet of snow plows and buses to bring customers to his front door. Because of Bill, Lake Tahoe became a year-round resort. He also knew that a key to his continued success would be found in entertaining his customers. He built lavish showrooms and brought in top-notch entertainers. He treated them like family, and Harris became one of the top venues in the world. Throughout the 60s and 70s, Harris Reno and Lake Tahoe continued to prosper and grow. In 1969, the Reno Hotel was built and took Harris to yet another level of success. In 1971, Harris went public, becoming the first purely gaming company to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Expansion of Harris Lake Tahoe solidified its reputation as a world-class resort. By the mid-70s, Harris' success was running at full throttle. But just a year after Harris' 40th company anniversary in 1977, Bill Harris died unexpectedly during an operation to repair an aortic aneurysm. When word of his death reached the casino floors, employees, longtime customers, and stars alike mourned together. A true pioneer had passed. Bill left a legacy that continues today, that his belief in treating customers, employees, and entertainers as first-class citizens and focusing on a quality experience would prove to be a successful business model for years to come.